on YouTube. Uh, I want to speak on, um, I want to take time to speak on about time and how you lose time. But you can't get back in trucking out here running these roads. And um, I've been losing a lot of time, I've noticed, over the past couple of years. My two older daughters, I got two grown daughters, one in their mid 20s, one is 21, about to be 22. And um, also have a 15 and a 13 year old. 13 year old about to be 14 in November. And I'm um, losing time. I noticed that every time I go home, it's like they've grown older, they've grown a little bit wiser, more of a smart ass. But um, I'm starting to lose time, time that I can't get back in trucking. This is one of the sacrifices that we make in trucking. And um, I have a four-year-old also. He was born after I was 40. He was a marital child. I don't know how that happened. Me and my wife were both over 40 when that happened. But um, I'm losing time with him also. Time that I didn't lose before when I worked a regular 9-to-5 job. Because I used to be a plumber slash pipe fitter. And I was home every night. But I was home, but I really wasn't home. I was home, but... I was always tired, always stuck in the room, always having to recover from a whole week of physical work. So now I'm gone the entire week. And when I get home, I have a little bit more energy, but I'm kind of confused on what to do. Do I just want to spend time with my family or do I want to run around and do all this other shit? So I've, I've probably made up my mind really to just sit at home a lot and not run around and not um, go see friends and all this other crap. I mostly just spend it just with my family and that's it. Like I said, I have a four year old. So, um, so every once in a while, you know what I mean? I, I try to bring them on like a short trip. They have a, they have a kid policy, you can't bring your kids out on the truck and stuff like that. So I try not to do that. You know what I mean? I don't want to break policy, get my ass fired. But um, you know, when I got to move the truck around, stuff like that, I'll let them come on there, sit on there, you know I mean? just be able to spend some time with them. But I'm getting ready to lose time that I can't get back as far as like Halloween. This will be his fourth Halloween. And this will be the fourth time I haven't been there for first two times, he was only one and two. I was working at the time, like one time I was working at night, the other time I was I was working on the weekends, shit like that, and I was just too tired to be walking around the neighborhoods for Halloween. So I let her do it. Now my wife has been, she's been super about it, she's never complained about it, never said anything about that. So I know she wished that I was more involved and stuff like that. But uh, I really was looking forward to going out with him for Halloween this year. Then I got the phone call that I need to be out for every two weeks before I go home for three days. So they had me on that schedule now. They took me off the being home Saturday and Sunday going back out Monday thing. Now they want me to be out for two weeks and come, just come home on um, just come home every two weeks on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to be home. So that's going to be more time that I'm losing there. So that's the life I chose being a truck driver, I understand, but I'm just talking about the time and time in your kid's life you can't get back without having a good woman there. You know what I mean? You can't count on relatives. You know I mean, I just have a superwoman who who deals with it. She puts up with it. It's going to put us in a better financial situation than what we were when I was working construction. When I worked construction, I was making about eight, nine hundred dollars a week. I know some of y'all say, hey, you make that as a company driver. A little, maybe a thousand sometimes. You, they got you running real good. Yeah, I understand that, but I, my, my plan is not to be a company driver forever. My plan is within some time next year to be able to have my truck. So this, these videos were a journey on to be getting that truck and then just documenting it for my kids. They can see where I came from, where I started, to where I ended up at. 
Hopefully that would be me owning multiple trucks. But you have to start somewhere. And no plan beats the plan without having a plan at all. You got to have a plan. You have to be determined to do something besides the norm. So I'm not okay with just doing the norm all the time. Like I didn't get into that. I could have stayed in construction. I could have made eight, nine hundred dollars a week and been home every day. That is not what this is about. This is about something bigger and achieving more. So uh, I had some people broke down on the harbor, family out there, like they was out there picnicking or something. All right, but um, yeah, so when I do the review on Party Hard, I'll explain to you my past and where I come from and um, why I relate so much with him is because of my past. Because I've been in trouble, because I've gotten in trouble all through my 20s, didn't get my shit together until my 30s. I spent my 30s working. I mean working, working. That's why I'm as big and strong as I am. Toting and carrying pipes, handling pipe wrenches all day, like just working my ass. I mean working my ass off. So that's what I did in my 30s. I turned 40. I started noticing that tightening all them bolts all night, tightening them bolts all day, just constantly putting pipe together, my body was starting to react different. I wasn't recovering as fast as I used to recover. And I was like, I got to do something different. But, um, so that's how I ended up doing trucking. I started looking, I was always been into YouTube, looking at YouTube videos. So I switched over from just looking at car shit and looking at lifestyle shit to um, motorcycle stuff because I was into bikes. I had a bike. I sold a bike. Um, and I started getting into watching truckers and truckers on YouTube, what they're doing, how they, how they make money, the amount of money they make, the fact that if you have a pass, it doesn't get held against you. There's plenty of fellas who have multiple trucks, have their own little fleets whatever it's, it's, it's an open business it's like construction like as long as you can do the work you can make the money and that's all anything should be when it comes to business but we all know that's not true so yeah but I was talking about time man how I'm losing time out here more and more like the time with the wife yeah but uh, I'm gonna say this in the nicest way possible You don't really lose that much time when you've been married as long as I've been married. It isn't like we have sex every night. You know what I mean? We was only really having sex on the weekend. And then when he was born, he cut that out. You know what I mean? He cut that down to maybe a couple times a month. If he gives us any peace and doesn't bust in the room and fuck that up. So... Yeah, that type of time I've already had it. I already had lost just my physical presence in the house I realized was needed more than I thought it was needed and sometimes when I'm home they all act sometimes they act like um, okay we're gonna do what you tell us to do until you leave type of deal and then once you leave we're gonna go back and abuse the mom like we've been abusing her but I can see that when I walked through the door, but you know I mean, at first my wife was holding it. She was holding it on me when I when first come home. It was like, you ain't here, you ain't here, you you don't do this, and I'm the one doing this, I'm the one doing that, and you this, and you and I had me and her had to have a talk. Say, like, look, we're still my house, you're still my wife, you're still my family. I'm out there trying to make a living for us, trying to make, so we can really have something and have something more than we ever had before besides the norm. I mean, fuck a new car every couple years. That like that ain't no life. Just being able to buy a car every couple of years. So, I wanted something more than that. So, that's what we're working on right now. So, she's working. I'm working doing this. She gets home at a reasonable hour. She's able to take care of the kids, the four-year-old. My old, uh, next to my oldest daughter, Kaya, still lives with us. She uh, she works. 
she helps out also around the house, but she's not ready to take on the responsibility of moving out by herself because she can barely pay the little car note and insurance and bills that she got right now living with us. Not alone moving out. We only gave her one bill today. One bill. And she struggles with that one bill. So she's not ready to move out yet. So everything is pretty much working out in my favor when it comes to getting ready to save this money up to buy this truck. So I know some of you asked what I plan on doing, how I plan on getting the truck. I will document that when the time comes, if I choose to buy from an auction or I choose to do a, a lease purchase from Lone Mountain or a company like that. KLM, uh, this is other, uh, not KLM, they're not doing none of those. I mean, uh, like a regular lease where you don't have a bulk of money to pay at the end of the, at the, end of the lease payment. You don't have a bulk of money to pay. But you can walk away from it if shit falls apart. So the thing about buying the truck and financing the truck is that when your business falls apart, you can't walk away from that truck. That truck is yours. You can't walk away from that truck. So you lease purchase it, you can walk away if shit falls apart. You only have to pay for the wear and tear that you've done to the truck while you've had it. So I'd rather be in that situation, being that I'm new to being an owner operator, than to go out and take a bank loan and be tied to it. I would rather wait till I become a veteran owner operator before I do something like that. But yeah, like I said, with time and time with family, I'm struggling right now. I miss my I miss my young man. I got an older son. He's uh he's 19, about to turn 20. He's in the Navy in, uh, in Virginia. So he's doing good. All my kids are doing good, man. One thing I pat myself on the back, man. My wife and I, we did a good job of raising young black kids, man. We got three kids that are not out there breaking the law, hanging out on the street, wanting to be down with gangs and wanting to be down with this and down with that. My son had his little issues like all young black boys had. He had an identity crisis like he wanted to be down with the guys that were out on the street but he's not from the street i'm from the street he's not from the street i mean he had a mom and dad he went home to every night hanging out with people who have no moms and no dads and out there living on their own doing their own thing like he wasn't relatable with them because in the end he always had us and we always had his back i didn't have that growing up he had that growing so he had no choice but to get his shit together and end up on the right track. That's where he's at now. He's in the military. He's good. He plans on staying there and retiring there. So he'll have a bulk of money when he get out of there in 10, 20 years. So, um, so yeah, that's what I meant by time. And you lose this time with these kids. You don't get it back out here chasing this money. That's the only thing that's going to really affect me that I'm used to being there. Even if I'm just there body alone, not commenting, not saying nothing, not really participating in nothing, but I'm just there. You know what I mean? We had an incident this past weekend where I was actually there, but I was upstairs. The living room was downstairs. Kids ran out the door. My four-year-old went running after the damn dog. He went running after the dog. Didn't hear nothing back. We had to call the police. They had helicopters, fire departments looking for him. We found his ass like three, four hours later. They were in another neighborhood. They said the dog ran him through the woods and all this other shit. A 15-year-old was with him, but she should have known. Her brother didn't have no damn clothes or shoes on to bring him back home. But she thought that all we cared about was the dog. So that's all they were caring about as they were running around the neighborhood. stuff like that man like I, if I was on the road and something like that happened I would actually fall apart out here like I said my wife has done a pretty good job of making sure there's no big incidents or nothing like that happens while I'm out here on the road some stuff she doesn't tell me about because she doesn't want it to stress me out while I'm out here trying to drive so that's the time in a nutshell man like you don't get this time back with your kids but 
you got to get out here and chase this, chase this dollar, bro. You got to get here and chase these miles, chase this money. Some guys choose to, to make seven, eight, six hundred dollars a week driving local, uh, working your ass off. Working local jobs work their ass off, man. They're unloading and load. They don't load the trucks, but they're unloading the trucks. Some of them load and unload. I just, I, I can't fool around with all that. I can't fool around. I'm, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm too old for that. I don't feel like it. I really don't. I really don't. Like I said, man, this time, you don't get this time back. This, this time is going by so quick. He's already four. I first started this trucking thing. He was two. So he's about to turn five. He's about to turn five, second week of December. Like I said, you don't get this time back. So you make the most of the time you got. When you're there, when I'm there, I make sure every weekend I'm home. I take him out to eat. We go out to eat. Uh, we're going to start going back bowling. I got bowling balls. I'm going to shoot footage of that. This family stuff I try to do when I'm home. It's not about me individually needing to go hang out and get drunk. I really, I didn't drink like that anyway when I first, <clears throat> as I got older, I didn't really, I never drunk like that. So being that I'm in trucking now, it doesn't bother me not to drink. It really doesn't. It doesn't bother me not to drink. It doesn't bother me not to, I never did smoke weed. So I'm, I don't care about that either. You know what I mean? Those things I don't really care about. Uh, my health has been failing a little bit. But that's, that's, that's typical when you start trucking, sitting around, eating and drinking all the time. I developed a uh, uh, slight case of diabetes. That's a slight case because if I kept up with what I was doing, I would have been in trouble. So I addressed it that, cut down on my sugar intake. Like everything I drink is not sugar. This stuff here, I drink these, uh, I drink the water bottles. And I have these uh, non-sugar uh, packets, these uh, crystal lights. I drink these crystal lights now. That's what I drink now. These strawberry. I don't really like that strawberry. A little too strong. Uh, the orange and uh, mostly the lemonade. The lemonade ones are the ones I drink all the time. That cuts down on my sugar intake. Because that's a big thing we're out here drink, out here uh, trucking. We're always wanting something to drink, something to snack on. I cut my snacking habit out to, I don't drink any, I don't snack on anything that has sugar in it. So the sugar stuff are either real, real low in sugar or no sugar at all. So I eat Doritos every once in a while, small bag of Doritos. Most of me is just drinking. So with me, on the right, four, country road five, 32. Me, it'd be drinking the, um, the muscle milks, the muscle milks, uh, and stuff like that, that have no sugar, one gram of sugar in it. That's almost like a snack to me. Stuff like that. that that'd be, that'd be stuff that I drink when I consider it to be a snack for me. So I had, I had to switch over. I had to get my mind focused on that so that I could wing myself off of eating fucking gummy bears all day. Like, I would have a big bag of gummy bears all day for like five, six hours. I'm just dipping in there, just eating a gummy bear here and there every every five minutes, every two minutes, dipping and getting some gummy bears. Like, that was part of my sugar intake. That was nonstop. The extra sweet teas I used to drink all the time. The purely the extra sweet teas. Wasn't, wasn't sweet enough. I had to get the extra sweet tea. All that, that sugar, and one day I was drinking, I think a Pepsi. I was drinking a Pepsi, and I had a sugar rush out of this world. That was the first sign, but I didn't know it was that. That was the first sign something was wrong. And I got all dizzy, I felt funny, and I needed to lay down, I stopped, took a break, laid down, I had a long run going to Utah. Laid down, went to sleep. So it was one of them where you're on the road for days and days. You can take a hour or two break if you have to, just eat at your 14. So I did that, and I was like, man, that ain't never happened. So I, was, I thought it was the Pepsi. 
So I blamed it on the Pepsi. Thought it was the Pepsi's fault. So when I, my wife got in the truck with me, her and my son, they came with me. I was working for Stevenson then. They rode with me for about a month. She was on the truck for about a month. And she noticed I was losing weight. Like I was really losing weight. Like I went from, like I think uh, 255, almost 260. I went down to like one, 240, 235. Like it was a drastic change in my weight and everything. So she noticed how small my face and everything looked. And she was like, but I felt good personally. Firstly, I felt good. And I was running around with my son, and you know, I had all this energy, but my vision was messed up. I couldn't see anything. Usually, I, I can't see things that are far away as I got older. I couldn't see anything that was really close up or far away. So I had to buy the freaking reading glasses out of the truck stops. I had to buy reading glasses for me to be able to see, period. So I knew something was wrong then. So I went to get my eyes checked because I knew I had a DOT physical coming up. I had left my glasses, lost my glasses for my long vision. So I went to get my DOT physical. Before I went to get my DOT physical, I went to get my eyes checked. And the doctor was like, man, that's a drastic change. In, that's a real drastic change in your, in your uh, eyesight there, young man. So that's a real drastic change in your eyesight. He's like, you need to get checked for uh, sugar. You need to get checked for sugar. I, I thought about it. I was like, you really, I told my wife, you really think I need to get checked? She was like, yeah, Chris, you need to do something. You need to get checked. At least get, I know you're feeling good, but your eyesight is really messed up. When he got a check, man, well, I was up at like 600. I was like 600. They was lucky I ain't had a stroke. That's how high my sugar was. So they put me on metformin, brought it down, I bought them things, you stick in your finger, all that, change starts slowly, change the way I ate, start looking on YouTube, how to change my diet, and all of that, and um, started putting my weight back on, that was the first time I was getting better, then, um, yeah, so I, I noticed that over the past four or five months, since I've changed the way I've eaten, all the tests have been negative, negative, negative for sugar. I just took another DOT physical before I came out, took one Monday morning, passed it flying colors. My eyesight slowly went back to the way it was. It took about three or four months, but it went back to how it was. And my, um, I guess I haven't tested positive anything with sugar or any of that. So what we eat out here is slowly killing us slowly kill us man if I didn't have a wife a Karen white that knew me that knew what I look like when I'm when I'm feeling bad even when I'm feeling good I'd probably be dead out here man would have had a stroke been dead out here out here thinking I'm feeling good I'm on top of the world I'm losing weight losing weight for no damn I wasn't hungry I just was thirsty all the time that's one of the first signs they said that you're always thirsty thirsty all the time and that's what I was I was thirsty all the time. Where am I? I'm in Florida right now, headed to this Gatorade drop yard. Uh, pick up a trailer. Drop the trailer I got. Pick up another Martin trailer. Yeah, Florida's nice now here. It's the time of year. Just went, I don't know. I just can't live here. But uh, yeah. So yeah, you gotta have somebody that cares about you, man. Let your girl or your wife take a look at you because they know what you look like. They know what you should look like. And if you're thirsty all the time and you're never hungry, something's wrong with you. If you were always hungry and all of a sudden now you don't want to eat, all you want to do is just drink, mouth is always dry, first sign your, uh, your uh, sugars went up on you, man. You need to get that checked out. But that was because I was in the truck with her spending time, time I was spending with her. And she was able to look me over and see my habits and realize there was something wrong with me. That's what a wife's supposed to do, man. That's what you're supposed to also do for her. 
So yeah, that's the end of my video. I just want to talk about how I'm losing time out here. I don't know how I'm gonna make it up. Hopefully I become my own operator, man. I can run out three, four weeks and hopefully spend about a week at home. Hopefully things go good for me. And like I said, I'm not gonna get myself over in and over my head with any kind of purchase, lease purchase or buying. Like I'm just not gonna do that. I watched too many guys fail doing that. And I don't want to be one of those people failing. I'm here talking about, ah, TB lost his truck. Nigga lost his truck over here talking shit about what he doing, he doing it. Nah, I'm not, not going to do that anyway. See, I do reviews on other truckers. Some people already gotten their feelings about that. That's dumb shit. Like, we look up to these guys, and it's important for them to know what we're getting out of their videos. That's all I'm doing. Let people know what I'm getting out your video, what you can do better in your videos, and how you come off in your video. It's as simple as that. So, what the hell? My motherfucker's parked. Truck driver's parked. Any kind of way. You know, Florida. What do I tell you? And um, I'll see y'all on the next video. It'll be another review on Party Hard. I'll probably hit him up, let him know. Go reviewing them, want to know what he thinks about the video and what I had to say. Uh, like I said, his past and my past were similar. Except I lost all my 20s, mostly in prison. I think he did six years or something like that. But I lost all my 20s in and out of prison. But uh, yeah, my next review be on Party Hard. It's the end of my video. Thank you for watching.